Hi, my name is Maren Mossman, and I'm a graduate student in the lab of Dr. Peter Engels at WSU, and we do experimental atomic physics. So what we look at in our lab is essentially fundamental quantum mechanics through the use of ultracold atomic gases. Now, that was a loaded sentence. Let me break it down. Quantum mechanics is an area of physics that deals with systems on a very small scale, so we're talking about the atomic scale. One thing we know from quantum mechanics is that all matter acts as a particle and as a wave. This is what is known as wave-particle duality. Think of light. We think of light as being similar to a water wave, with an amplitude and a wavelength, which determines the type of light we're looking at. However, we also define light as being a group of photons, which are particles. The same is true with all matter, whether or not it has mass. The wavelength is very small if the particles we are talking about are at room temperature and are massive, so we imagine regular matter behaving like billiard balls on the table, bouncing off of each other. But if we cool these particles down, the wavelength of the matter wave increases, and we're able to observe the wave-like nature of these atoms. And that's what we do in our lab. Now for the next part of that loaded sentence at the beginning, ultra-cold atomic gases. What constitutes something being ultra-cold, you may ask. At the Fundamental Quantum Physics Lab at WSU, we use novel techniques with lasers and magnetic fields to cool down atoms to temperatures one billionth of a degree above absolute zero. So that's a really hard number to process. So consider this, analysis, this analogy. If Pullman, Washington represents absolute zero and Boston, Massachusetts represents room temperature, the temperatures that we're cooling our atoms to in our lab are the width of a pencil tip. Now that's pretty cold. Once our atoms are prepared, we can then start to manipulate them using light and magnetic fields, but we can't touch them. Since we're so amazingly cold, anything introduced into the system would heat the ultra-cold cloud of atoms up and destroy our sample. So we also require that we have a very good vacuum system. But the fun thing is, is that our machines are built such that our experiments are extremely reproducible and tunable. So with the simple turn of a knob, we can adjust the final temperature of our ultra-cold clouds, as well as doing other things. Of course, everything is automated in our labs, so we spend most days when we're taking data behind a computer. How quickly can we do this, you may ask? Well, every time we take a picture of our ultra-cold cloud in the lab, or if we introduce too much instability to the system, we destroy our sample. All in all, we're able to cool atoms from room temperature clouds down to an ultra-cold atomic gas in 20 seconds. This means that we're able to make hundreds of what are known as bosines and condensates every day. So this is a very involved process, and if you come to visit our lab at WSU for a lab tour, we can show you all the different parts that go into making these Bose-Einstein condensates. We can talk to you about different applications for lasers and magnetic fields, as well as mechanical parts like vacuum systems, optical fibers, optics, and electronics. We'd love to have you here to visit, so please have your science teacher contact Robin Stratton at WSU to organize a tour with our lab and with other labs or theory groups in the WSU Physics and Astronomy Department. And as always, go Cougs!